Welcome back to the channel. If you don't know who I am, I'm Michael Lawson, and I teach the Word of God simply. I do this by showing you how to read the Bible in context and refuting false claims with biblical truth. But today, I'm asking ChatGPT, what's the biggest problem people have with Christianity? So if this is something you're interested in, then stick around. So, asking ChatGPT, what's the biggest problem people have with Christianity, gave me several responses that I've been making videos about, using, of course, the Bible. And this is number four of those videos. So, let's get into it. Ethical and social concerns. Some individuals challenge certain moral teachings or social stances within Christianity. Disagreements can arise regarding issues such as gender roles, sexuality, reproductive rights, or the relationship between religion and science. Oh my goodness. What? This is one of the biggest problems people have with Christianity? Seriously? Look, I get it. It says some and not all. There are enough people who actually have a problem with Christianity because of gender roles, sexuality, and reproductive rights? Stop right there. Because you, trying to reframe the murder of unborn and call it reproductive rights is insidious and disgusting and you should be ashamed. But of course you're not because you're also fighting for things like gender roles and sexuality, which are abundantly clear within the first pages of the Bible. Okay, that's my opening rant. Let's unpack this biblically, one point at a time, starting with the problem you have with Christianity's stance on gender roles. What does the Bible say? According to Genesis 1, 26 through 28, the Bible is very clear. And I mean very clear about God's crown jewel of creation. In fact, in this verse, there is so much more than just his creation, but how his creation is to be. He literally defines their purpose. Let's read what it says and then unpack it as it relates to gender roles. Starting in verse 26, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every crawling thing that crawls on the earth. So, Right there, we have design and purpose. It continues in verse 27, So God created man in his own image. He created them in the image of God. He created them. Now, I'm no scientist, nor do I have a PhD. I only have a bachelor's degree and an MBA, neither of which are helpful in science. And yet, a fifth grader, can read verse 27 and come away knowing exactly what it means. There are only two genders, therefore two roles, therefore two sexes. But it gets better because in the next verse, we get their mission. Verse 28, God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Okay, make it make sense, please. So, here we have God creating mankind after himself to rule over his creation. He creates mankind male, and out of that creation comes his counterpart female, his perfect match. Which, if you examine creation before mankind, you'll notice that the animal kingdom was created with the same purpose, to be fruitful and multiply. So mankind is to be fruitful and multiply. However, that is impossible in the way God designed it 
if two women join together to become one, or two men join together to become one, they are incapable of fulfilling God's mission, his mandate to be fruitful and multiply. Now, before you interject your opinion, you must realize that it doesn't matter when you bump it up against the Word of God. In fact, to do otherwise is to simply pervert the Word of God, which is what we are seeing happening today. Because people don't like the fact that God is saying something counter to the way they feel. And when enough of you get together, you have the power of group to band together and work at tearing down this mean old ogre in the sky out of touch with society. Okay, what about reproductive rights? First, stop calling it reproductive rights. It's murder of the unborn. As if you have the right to kill someone. And I don't care that abortion murder is legal. I don't need to pull out the Bible to show you where it says thou shalt not kill because you inherently know that it's wrong. And yet for some reason, you've allowed yourself to be convinced because the person living inside you has not been born and so that it's okay to kill them. They're living inside of you, just not outside of you, and thanks to you, they never will. Guys, let's get to the heart of the matter. The reason God gave the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, to the children of Israel was essentially to separate them, or as one rabbi put it, to wean them from the pagan practices they had been subjected to for over 400 years during their slavery in Egypt. Because the pagans living among them and around them were doing exactly what God forbid. So when the commandment says, thou shalt not kill, or you are to have no other gods before me, well, newsflash, they were killing and sacrificing infants and worshiping way too many gods to mention. Now, if you're a Christian, this should sound very familiar. In the world, but not of the world? That's what it means to be set apart and different. I mean, we could go down the list and see that every commandment was to set them, us, apart from a world who practices disgusting acts, chasing after everything but God, right? We chase after the created thing instead of the creator. Okay, what about sexuality? First, we just confirmed that God made two sexes out of mankind, that being male and female. However, I understand sexuality isn't that. It's about attractedness, who you're attracted to sexually. Well, this is nothing new. Sodom and Gomorrah are the prime example of just being sexually attracted to the same sex, but also engaging in same-sex relationships. God didn't approve of it then, and he sure doesn't approve of it now. Guess what else God doesn't approve of, and yet mankind engages in? That's right, you guessed it, adultery. So please stop with the I was born this way argument because there is no mention of that in Scripture. What's mentioned in Scripture are the penalties for those who engage in not just those practices, but a whole host of other practices that we tend to overlook because the same-sex sinning has somehow become greater than lying, stealing, and cheating. Would you believe, in fact, it shouldn't be hard to believe that I, me, has a propensity to lie, cheat, and steal, but choose not to engage in such practices. Although I do find myself sometimes after, after a conversation thinking to myself, why did I just say that? It wasn't entirely true. Or why did I leave that part out? I lied. I flat out lied. And I hate that I still sometimes do that. We all have urges that we know we shouldn't act on. And then there are those of us who say, I can't fight this urge because there are people all around you affirming your feelings. 
How are you going to let your feelings win the day? Are you not stronger than your feelings? I've got a whole host of feelings I don't act on, and I pray that you find the strength to overcome your feelings rather than giving in to them just to satisfy your flesh. Okay, so check out the Asking Chat GPT playlist where I get into a lot of other topics that I believe will truly help you, and I hope be a blessing to you. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace. Amen. See you in the next video.